Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to Sundays in Sabelle. And today we, well, as you can see from the title, it's kind of a rant. And I hate to do this to you all because I don't think anybody really likes rant videos, but there's a subject that has been, sorry, my eyes are really itchy. There's a subject that's been weighing on my mind. So let's talk about it a little bit. I'm going to get it out and then we'll talk about what I actually wanted to talk about at the end of the video. So lately, if you watch the news, if you watch YouTube, you will see either YouTube videos or news stories where they're talking about food shortages and supply chain, sh uh, chain shortages and all this stuff. So first of all, I haven't experienced, experienced any of this and I live in New Jersey. Um, do I, I live in a rural area of New Jersey. So first of all, my supermarkets are limited to a Walmart and a ShopRite. That's it. That's all I have. So, and then we have a couple of like uh, small Italian markets and they have more specialty items. And we have a couple of bodegas and they have more Hispanic, specifically Mexican items. So I do have food options, but I keep seeing all these videos on YouTube of people like taking shots of a Walmart and the shelves are empty and they're, they're re really extremist. And, you know, I, I also feel like a lot of these are politically motivated. I really feel like a lot of these people are trying to say that the current president somehow has control over how much food is in the supermarket, which is not true. Also, I got to be honest, if I was, if I owned a supermarket chain, I would be paying people to make these videos because it would scare the crap out of people and they'd run to the supermarket and they'd buy all the food, which has now gone up in price. Yes, all the food has gone up in price. I, I completely get that. So here's the thing. There's been a couple things that I've been doing that are keeping my food prices down. So let's talk about that first. First of all, like I always say, Buy everything out of season except your food. Buy the food that's in season. That's the stuff that's going to be cheap. I'm not going to be buying strawberries in February. It's a great idea, but they're going to cost me a fortune. So they're off the table because they're not in season. Um, when it comes to meat, which has actually been one of the big things, um, I've noticed chicken's gotten really expensive. And I have seen less chicken in my supermarket. It hasn't been completely out of chicken, but I've seen less. Um, I've just been buying cheaper cuts. So I've been buying drumsticks. They're always cheaper. Thighs. You can do skinless, boneless thighs instead of skinless, boneless chicken breasts. They do have more fat in them. If you're dieting, they're not going to be your friend, but, you know, it's something you can do. And then the other thing I do, which freaks out a couple people I know, but I don't care, is in my supermarket, when it's a manager special, meaning they need to get rid of it because it's about to expire. And expire is a very loose term, by the way. <laughs> the best buy date or expiration dates on food are, um, how should we say this politely? Um, they're basically a fantasy because yes, there is an expiration date on meat and eggs and things like that, but it's not the same as what the supermarket is convincing you it is because they really want you to buy this stuff and get it out of there. And it, it, you know, it's like, it's funny when I see things like ham that's expired when I'm like, hmm, the whole point of ham is they used to put it in a barrel with salt and it lasted for the six months through the winter, right? So yeah, it, with no refrigeration, right? So it's kind of like one of those gray areas. But anyway, I buy the yellow sticker meat. So for me, it's like roulette. I go in and I'm like, what, what's got a yellow sticker? Oh, look, a meatloaf mix last week had a yellow sticker. I made meatloaf. It was delicious. The week before that, there were hamburgers with a yellow sticker. I had hamburgers. I actually made like a, what's called a hamburger steak, which by the way, if you've never had one of these, basically it's a hamburger, but it's thicker. It's much thicker. And they, for some reason, they always make them oval. So I kind of took it and I took the hamburger and I played with it a little bit and I ended up with two hamburger steaks and hamburger steaks normally are served with mushrooms and onions and sometimes a gravy like Salisbury steak is so that's more steak like, but hamburger steak is also, if I remember correctly, hamburger steak is made from sirloin steak from ground sirloin steak. So that might be part of it too. But you know, I had hamburger steak. Um, this week I found pork chops and they were 
really nice pork chops, but they were half price because they needed to go. So I grabbed them and put them in my freezer and I cooked them last night and they were absolutely delicious and nothing wrong with them. Um, the same goes for things like bread. Um, like, you know, don't get me started on expiration dates for bread. Like how long has it been on the shelf? How many preservatives are in it? <laughs> like, you know, like there's so many variables with bread. What kind of bread is it? Is it a whole wheat bread or a white bread? They, they expire at different rates, you know, like stuff like that. And let me just, little side note here. My Dollar Tree has not gone up in price. It's still a dollar at my Dollar Tree. So I'm still getting oatmeal for a dollar. I can still get English muffins for a dollar. I can get bagels for a dollar. I can get bread for a dollar. The bread at my Dollar Tree is made by Stroman's. I know this because many times when I've gone to Dollar Tree right after work, the Stroman's truck is out front and he's unloading bread into Dollar Tree. That's how I know it's made by Stroman. All they do is they stop the run that has their bags and they replace them with the Dollar Tree brand bags and they run the same bread. I I'm not kidding when I tell you this. There's actually a lot of people who have talked about this in the past. So you have Dollar Tree. You can buy things in season. You can buy things that are close to expiration. And some things like I don't get, like my coffee has an expiration date on it. Okay, I understand it's not going to be as strong as if I, if I open it up and let it breathe, right? But really, coffee? Yeah, it's going to be a long time before that expires, so whatever. Um, so I'm going to link below something that I find interesting. For every one of these, there's no food on the shelf panic videos that are on YouTube. You can also find a, here's a dumpster full of food behind Aldi, Giant, uh, Dollar General, all of them. I'm going to link one that's made by some people here in New Jersey that I watch on a pretty regular basis, and they're called Freakin' Fabulous. and I'm sorry, Freakin' Frugal. And he did a video last night outside a Dollar General, and he t I think he titled it Dollar General Shelves Are Empty, Dumpster Is Full, because he went into Dollar General, and there are all these empty shelves, and then he went back in the back to the dumpster, and it was full of food. So I'm going to link it below because it's like a perfect example of this. And, you know, just on another, just as another area of my rant, let's talk about the fact that you need to have a food pantry. You need to have some food put by. I'm not saying go out tomorrow and spend, you know, $100 and panic and buy lots of stuff. What I'm saying is over time, you need to develop a pantry. You need to know that if, like in my case, New Jersey got... I think two feet of snow. I'm going to take a picture of it and put it in the thumbnail so you guys can see how much snow we got because it's sitting on my air conditioner. You can see it. Um, you know, I wasn't going to the store yesterday and you know what? I didn't have to because I have like six boxes of pasta right now, different kinds of pasta. I have some chicken stock that I made myself in the freezer. I can make chicken soup. I have pasta sauce that I made last week and I froze some of it because it's really good. All of these things, right? I also have canned vegetables. I have all of this stuff because I shop. I have a budget. I buy a couple extras every week. I buy the loss leaders. That's another thing you can do to save money is buy the loss leaders. Um, I buy things on sale. I put them aside. You should have a pantry. You should never be panic buying food. Like you don't want to be panic buying food when there is an emergency like New Jersey had a state of emergency because Saturday we had so much snow and we got it really quickly. Also, we literally got it overnight because it stopped by about midday and it stopped snowing and it started at seven o'clock at night. So it was literally like overnight we got all this snow. So those are my tips. I'm also going to link below a video that I did a while back on things that I always keep in my pantry. I, I, I have a couple of them, so I'll figure out which one I like the best and I'll put it up there. But yeah. Like, seriously, our ancestors had a pantry. They put stuff aside because there was no refrigeration. They grew most of their food, right? So you needed to can it, you needed to pickle it, you needed to dry it, salt it, hang it, whatever you needed to do. Even eggs, there were ways of preserving eggs to get you through winter because they had to get through winter. And we've completely lost that. Of all of the vintage skills, I have to say that preparing food for winter is probably the one we should bring back immediately. And then we can talk about sewing because canning, you know, first of all, I, I was appalled. I bought marmalade, which I haven't bought for a while. It was over $2. And I, being the cheap pussy, was like, what? <laughs> 
I can probably make a marmalade for like 99 cents a jar or less if I make it myself. I just haven't done it in a while. So yeah, this, this spring I'll be getting out all the canning supplies again and making some jam because I don't, I'm not paying other people's prices for jam. So anyway, there's my rant. I will put up a video that I did a while back. I'll, I'll just put it at the end. It'll roll right into it. Um, I'd love to see your comments because I'm sure lots of you are probably seeing the same thing like the, oh my God, there's no food YouTube video. And literally like right in the feed next to it is the, I'm at all these dumpster, or I'm at Trader Joe's dumpster. It's full of bread. Like, <laughs> it's like, well, which is it? There's no food. We have a supply chain issue or there's a dumpster full of food and supermarkets are trying to get more money out of you by making you think that there's less food. Hmm. I wonder which one it is, right? All right, so I'm gonna get off my soapbox. I'm gonna show you guys what I found. I went back to Goodwill and look what I found. Yes, now, oh, I, it was cracked over here. And I have a feeling it was done at Goodwill because you could see the pieces were inside because she took good care of this. And I'm pretty sure this belongs to our same lady that I've been getting all her patterns. So I did a repair, it's kind of wonky, but I thought it was creative. There was an empty seam binding uh, thing from Wrights and I was like, I'm gonna use that to fix the corner. And it's, it's really basic. There wasn't too much in it um, that I, you know, but there were a couple cool things. I thought this was really cool. I don't know what this is. I'm assuming it's a hem guide. It just, it just says ultra guide. So I don't know. And this was in there and I thought it was so cute. Look at how cute it is. And then that was it. She had a pink. Oh no, this, you know what? This wasn't in here. This was in the when thread. Oh yeah, and I got more thread, right? But yeah, it's just one of these, but it's a smaller one. So I am using it for all of this. Let me show you guys so you can see the level of addiction that I have. This, all of this, and then, you know, basically the whole row underneath. This is all bias tape. Can you see that row? It's all hem tape, bias tape, um, seam bindings, all that stuff. You can see I got a little bit of lace in here, stuff like that. So yeah, I worked on this. I got all this organized. It was great. That was the great thing about having a snow day was I actually worked on all this stuff that you always go, oh, one of these days when I have more time, I'm going to do blah, 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 fill in the blank. And I did. I actually got it all done. It was really nice. I got a bunch of stuff done. I cleaned up and organized my sewing room, which made me very happy. And I finally got the puzzles up on Etsy. In fact, I have a couple more. I have the last of them, which are the really old ones. I'm having trouble finding prices on them because they are so old. But the rest of them, the ones from the 40s and 50s, are up on Etsy. If any of you were interested in those puzzles, they're up there. Um, and that's it. So I've said my piece. And... <laughs> That's my video for today. I'm not gonna drone on and rant on, but I am gonna put some videos below of, you know, people going through dumpsters and finding huge amounts of food. And that's, and the, here's the thing that kills me. One of the videos I watched, it's a couple days ago. I think it was, I can't remember who it was, but this, it was this woman and she said, she went into um, Dollar General and the shelves were pretty empty and she ran around the back and she found something like a case of crackers that had never been unpacked. They had like opened it and like you could see somebody like looked at it and then they put it in the dumpster and she pulled out one of these boxes and it was like, you know, Dollar General's brand of crackers. I, I think they might've been graham crackers. All right, so not something that anybody uses, just graham crackers. Um, their expiration date was like June of, 2000, or of 2023. So they weren't expired. There was nothing wrong with them previous to going to the dumpster, they looked a little, the box looked a little wet, the outside box. And someone just opened the case, looked at them and put them in the dumpster. So is there actually a food shortage and a supply chain shortage, right? The reasonable question, right? So anyway, let's all chew on that for a while. I'd love to see your comments. Until my next video, which should be Tuesday, stay warm, especially if you're in Jersey, stay safe if you're in Jersey. And uh, until the next video, like, comment, subscribe. I'd love to hear what you guys are think, think on this subject. And I uh, will see you in the next one. Bye.